next one we'll describe the OATS procedure. Again, the surgical options for cartilage restoration include microfracture, which is shown here, open reduction in internal fixation, which involves repairing a fracture of cartilage and bone, osteochondral autologous transfer, or OATS procedure, which is the topic of this video, autologous chondrocyte implantation, where we take a biopsy of your healthy cartilage and then grow that in the lab and re-implant it six weeks later. And then finally, allograft, which is taking cadaver bone and cartilage and transplanting it into a site where you need it. To understand oats, we'll go through several case examples. Here's a 51-year-old lady who's had long-standing pain on the inside of the knee. MRI showed a degenerative type meniscus tear and thinning of the cartilage at one spot. We took her to arthroscopy and found that the cartilage injury was much more than what the MRI had shown, as can be seen here. You can see that the cartilage is completely torn away. This tan area is bone, so she has a hole in her cartilage. What we also see here is she has very healthy cartilage around it. This isn't arthritis. This is an isolated injury to healthy cartilage. Therefore, I determined to proceed with an open OATS procedure or osteochondral autologous transfer. And in that procedure, what we're doing is taking a plug of healthy cartilage and bone from a site on the side of the knee, a spot that we know from multiple studies the cartilage is not needed nearly as much, and we remove that plug to where the patient does need it. She had a hole uh, right around this area of her knee, and here you can see that plug sliding into place. So now she has good healthy cartilage at a site where she had none before and again it's true cartilage and not fibrocartilage or scar tissue like you would see with a microfracture procedure. Another patient, 38 year old male, had right knee pain for one year. He says he's avoiding squats now and avoids stairs. He's had previous treatment by an orthopedist, that, which included a steroid shot, anti-inflammatory medications, and he's even had a knee scope for a meniscectomy. He has 4 out of 10 pain now, 10 out of 10 pain it's worse, really no change since that knee scope by an outside physician. He complains of swelling in the knee. On examination, I found that he was tender on the inside of the knee. He had a sharp pain at a consistent point whenever I flexed his knee, no instability, and had normal range of motion in the knee. And then he brought these arthroscopy photos from an outside doctor. I was immediately drawn to these sp photos specifically because they show a defect on the inside of the knee where he was having a lot of his pain. We tried non-operative treatment first, prescription pain medications and other, a topical medication as well. We got an arthritis panel, which is just blood work to make sure he didn't have some kind of uh, inflammatory arthritis. We tried him on glucosamine chondroitin sulfate, which is an over-the-counter medication. And in the end, none of that worked, and he still had pain in the same spot on his knee. Therefore, I took him to arthroscopy. Here you can see the setup for an arthroscopy. This is uh, the knee hanging over the side of the table, sterilely prepped. You can see my high definition video screens, one for me, the surgeon, and one for my assistant uh, on the other side of the room. And then you can see this white cord here. This is the light to the arthro arthroscope, uh, which is a small camera, five millimeters in diameter, which I can insert through very small incisions, as you can see in relation to this penny, and then insert arthroscopic instruments to perform my procedure. And in this case, what we saw is the defect here. Well, again, it doesn't project very well. This is the defect that we saw on the other orthopedic surgeon's photos. And here, it's the same as it was then. Really no improvement in the lesion because we know cartilage has very little ability to heal itself without intervention. Therefore, I determined in this case that with a single plug of tissue, I would be able to fix him. Therefore, we kept it in arthroscopic procedures through those very small incisions. Um, we took a plug of cartilage from a spot in the knee where he didn't need it. Here you can see I've made a hole the same size at the size of his lesion, slid that plug into place, and you can see a nice restoration of healthy cartilage at the site where he's having pain and where he formerly had none. Another patient, 44-year-old male, stepped through a manhole, hit the top of his knee on the opposite side of the manhole. 
he was treated for eight weeks for a quadriceps contusion and in the end he couldn't climb stairs he was very frustrated he had popping under the kneecap uh, in my examination he had a sharp pain at 40 degrees of knee flexion the MRI showed what's called chondromalacia patella which essentially just means bag cartilage underneath the kneecap we took him to arthroscopy as well here you can see um, two different lesions there's a large hole in the cartilage underneath his kneecap which is above here and then on the other side of the knee there was a fissure uh, or a cut in the cartilage as well so two different lesions underneath the kneecap which is a really bad spot to have a cartilage injury so in this case again we proceeded with an OCH procedure an open procedure here you can see after the first defect is filled with a plug of cartilage down at the bottom here you can see the donor sites where I took the cartilage from and then here you can see nicely that fissure that I described the cut in the cartilage here's how we handled that with two small plugs and filled up that defect so now he has nice healthy cartilage you can see that this is the trochlea or the groove for the kneecap and the kneecap comes into this groove right around 40 degrees so it uh, perfectly fits with his symptoms in which he, when we bent the knee to 40 degrees he had pain that's because it was falling into this fissure and this hole in the cartilage uh, therefore this should have a high likelihood of solving his problem Another patient's a 29-year-old male kite boarder. He's had left knee pain for one week, severe pain and catching on the inside of the knee. No pain when he's sitting still, but severe pain when he tries to move at all. He had to stop kite boarding, can't push off the wall even when he swims. He presents with a swollen knee, a bruise on the inside of the knee, and we can feel a marble type uh, mass underneath his skin which moves around underneath my fingers. He also has severe pain on the inside of the knee with motion, and we can't bend it beyond 90 degrees in the office. We got an MRI of his knee, and it's fairly obvious uh, what's going on here. Here's a side view of the knee, or a sagittal view. This is the femur here, and the tibia here, and this should be a nice smooth line coming all the way across here. And instead, what you see is a 2.5 centimeter defect part of it uh, is filled with a bone fragment but part of it is completely missing this is just fluid here and you can see multiple images of that here's another side view and here's looking at that image from the front you can see it's about two centimeters wide when you look at it from the front so we determined in his case to proceed with a combination OATS procedure and ORIF. Here you can see that loose fragment. Um, you can see that in three dimensions how that's a very deep bone defect. Um, you can also see that that uh, fragment doesn't exactly match the defect. It covers about half of it. So we're going to need something else to fill the rest of the defect. Here you can see once we've opened up the knee, putting that fragment back in place, I did have to put some bone graft behind that in order to get it to sit where it's sitting there. And then to fill the rest of the defect, we took those circular plugs, which you've seen before, for the OATS procedure. So these are bioabsorbable screws holding his uh, fractured fragment in place. And these are plugs of uh, cartilage and bone for the OATS portion of the procedure. There you can see that arthroscopically, once we finished up and closed up, uh, and we took the knee through a range of motion to make sure that there was nice smooth surface, and this will smooth out dramatically over time, which I'll show you. Last case, a 14-year-old male football player, four months in knee pain, started while he was doing box jumps, and he's had severe pain since. He also is a big guy, six foot two, 365 pounds. He comes in with a major limp, He's tender on the inside of the knee, no instability of the knee. His MRI here shows, again looking from the side or sagittal view, you can see this obvious abnormality underneath the cartilage. You can see also though that the cartilage looks fairly good, intact. This black line is not broken. However, he had significant pain that didn't get better with conservative management. Therefore, we took him, took him to uh, arthroscopy. Looking at this superficially, it doesn't look too bad. He's got nice smooth cartilage surface here. However, as I probe it, I can tell that it's soft. And what we found here is termed osteochondritis desiccans. I spoke of it briefly before in another video, 
And what that is is where the bone dies underneath the cartilage. The cartilage is actually healthy, but when the bone dies underneath it and there's no support, you can see my probe easily falls through the cartilage, and here I created a hole. So at this point, we went ahead and took up down the cartilage roof so we could see the size of the defect. He had a very large hole in the bone, and without any support there, there's really no way this is ever going to get better. Therefore, in his case, we proceeded with an open oats procedure again. It involved about three plugs, as you can see here. We filled that plug nicely with the bone uh, and cartilage from a spot in the knee where, again, he doesn't need it as much, uh, effectively filling the spot where he did have pain. Now, when you look at this, it doesn't look like that would be very comfortable or smooth. We, we talk about how cartilage is supposed to be a frictionless surface. Well, uh, I don't have a lot of follow-up uh, photos because we don't get a lot of chances to go back on these because they tend to do fairly well and there's no need for additional surgery. I do have one follow-up on this patient, however, who needed an ACL reconstruction at a later date. Here you can see I filled his defect with four plugs. You can see there's spaces here, here, here. Uh, you, you'd have a lot of reasons to be concerned that this isn't going to be a very smooth surface. Uh, in the end. However, when we went back for his ACL, you can see that it does fill in very nicely. This is nice, normal, healthy cartilage. You can still see the remnant of the plug there. And what fills around it is what's called fibrocartilage. Um, that's the same type of scar tissue you get with a microfracture. So that tissue is not great, but in the small amount of area where it is, it doesn't come into play because the large areas of defect are filled with this uh, nice, smooth cartilage. And also, you might wonder what happens at the donor sites. I don't have a picture of this patient's donor site, but you saw them before on previous patients. Well, this is what it looks like when uh, that fills in over time. Again, that fills in with fibrocartilage. It's not as good as regular cartilage, but it's in a spot on the side of the knee where they don't need it quite as much, and it doesn't typically cause pain. So in summary, osteochondral autologous transfer, or OATS, is a procedure where we move healthy cartilage and bone from where you need it less to where you need it more. It's better than microfracture for athletes and for those with higher activity levels.